and country-by-country country systems for tracking debt are proven to be inadequate, says World Bank report. Senate approves federal government 2018-2020 external borrowing plan. Asia stocks mixed. Shares of Chinese developer Fantasia plunged in return to trade. Plus, oil climbs and surprise U.S. crude stocks decline. Details of this and more on Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. join us on the business side of life and we start by telling you that the World Bank says a time when sovereign debt in the poorest countries has surged to dangerously high levels global and country by country systems for tracking it are proven to be inadequate these gaps make it harder to assess debt sustainability and the over indebted countries to restructure debt promptly and generate a durable economic recovery in a report, Debt Transparency in Developing Economies, this marks the first comprehensive assessment of the global and national systems for monitoring sovereign debt. The report finds that the surveillance today depends on a patchwork of databases with different standards and definitions and different degrees of reliability, cobbled together by various organizations. The World Bank Group President David Malpa said the poorest countries will emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic with the largest debt burdens in the last few decades. But limited debt transparency will delay critical debt reconciliation and restructuring. Senate has approved the 2018 to 2020 federal government external borrowing plan of 16.2 billion United States dollars, 1 billion euros, and a grant component of 125 million dollars. The approval is sequel to the consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt, which scrutinized the request. The loans from the World Bank, China Exim Bank, and eight other international financial institutions is expected to be injected into infrastructure and a human capital development. The Senate also approved the committee's recommendation that request for 500 million euros, but not more than 750 million euro bond in the international capital market to be approved. John results in Nigeria project. It's $222 million to be financed by World Bank. They have the Ministry of Environment, which they have two projects there. One is Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project, additional funding for $400 million to be financed by World Bank. The approval we are giving today is to enable the commence negotiation sourcing for this loan. That the Senate do approve the underlisted ongoing negotiation of external borrowing in the sum of 16 billion 230 million 77,718 dollars 1 billion and 20 million euros and a grant component of 125 million dollars under the 2018 2020 external borrowing rolling plan. Say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. 
The legislators demanded that the executive forward the terms and conditions of the loan to the National Assembly. And uh, moving on, in the face of inequalities in wealth and opportunity worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic, impact investing an approach that integrates society's social and environmental goals can no longer be ignored. Vice President Yemio Shibajo made this observation in a keynote speech delivered virtually at the Fort Impact Investors Foundation annual convening on impact investing. The vice president says the glaring inequalities in wealth and opportunity in the face of poverty, misery and social alienation in any society is asking for trouble, stressing that such a situation is neither sustainable. But there's a long way to go from the relatively random investment landscape that we have for impact investing, we now must move to a more orderly space where, for example, government regulations and incentives are clearly worked out with stakeholders. The point uh, in, in, in the spectrum that is occupied by, by impact investors between the not-for-profit end ESGs and the uh, for-profit entities is still essentially virgin, it's still essentially virgin space. So questions are how can we incentivize these investments and how can we properly measure impact in order to, uh, to assess what fair incentives would be. There's clearly an opportunity here for collaborative thinking between government and the impact investing community and other stakeholders on policy and regulations. The Senate Committee on Finance has urged the Ministry of Finance and its agencies to concentrate on blocking revenue leakages and improve revenue collection and remittances to government. The committee emphasized this at the defense scrutiny of the 2022 budget. Moplang Dakok reports. The chairman of the Fiscal Responsibility Commission gave the breakdown of a total of 814.9 million Naira 2022 budget. But the committee asked for more explanation of what it described as discrepancies in the proposal. The 2.2 ordinarily should be for library equipment. Okay, where is it now? It's now placed as. Uh, Purchase of uh, furniture, office equipment, and fittings. The same figure, there's no addition, there's no subtraction, sir. The Office of the Accountant General of the Federation also presented its 2022 budget. A total of 752.831 million as overhead cost. Uh, proposed for 2022. Our capital cost for 2022 is 629.6 million. The committee was concerned about the revenue profile of the nation, especially as it concerns issue of ghost workers and Nigeria's continuous borrowing, and advised the various ministries to strategize on how to improve revenue. So my friend, my colleague, like no detailed information concerning the revenue status and profile of this country. Which direction and releases are which direction are we going under your table leadership at the head of Office of Attorney General? And in terms of borrowing, what are your views? Uh, how much is coming into the coffers of this government from within? So that we now advise ourselves as to whether or not to continue to borrow, because borrowing has become a big problem to everybody. The Committee on Finance also stressed the need for more payment platforms, apart from Remita, which is the only payment solution in the country right now. In Abuja, Muplang, Dakok. Now, beaming the searchlights on who owns what in Nigeria's extractive industries will prevent revenue leakages, support businesses, and attract investment. This was agreed upon at the launch of Opening Extractives in Nigeria, organized by the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NAITI. Yes, government, companies, and civil society actors should have greater access to and use of comprehensive and reliable information about the ultimate owners of extractive industry companies facilitated through opening extractives. 
We applaud Nigeria's accomplishments in launching the Persons of Significant Control Register and prior to this developing Africa's first digital beneficial ownership register for the extractive sector. Making the registers count through constant interrogation, update and utilization of information and data contained in these registers to demand accountability are critical to the success of this campaign. The NHWG will therefore continue to provide the required leadership, strategic policy direction, monitoring and oversight that will ensure successful implementation. Commodities market. Okay, accountants play an important role in helping any business to run smoothly. Accountants are responsible for examining financial statements to ensure accuracy and compliance with existing laws and regulations, handling tax-related uh, tax as much as other responsibilities. Today is International Accounting Day, and joining me to talk about the significance of the day and the profession is the president of the Association of Accountants of Nigeria. He is Professor Benjamin Chuku Osisioma. Professor, joining me through telephone, you're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof. Nice to be here. Okay, good. Today is International Accountants Day with the theme Accountable Leadership in the 21st Century. What does this mean for Nigeria in an era of economic recovery? Okay, 
Professor, sure. talk, talking about accountability and performance now, uh, looking at the COVID-19, it came with its challenges as well as opportunities. For the accounting profession in Nigeria, are we still counting money and balancing books in manual way, or do we have softwares that do it better and faster? Talking about adapting technology in ensuring work is done and faster and efficient. One Go ahead. Thing actually is that the, 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 the demand for accountability is more heightened today than ever before. Uh, we have resources of government to account for. And in the post COVID era, this is further amplified in the sense that COVID paralyzed activities all over the world for a period of time in excess of six months. And after that, it was like trying to reboot the economy. The government is rebooting, trying to restart, to begin again, almost as if to say, from scratch. This is a time to ask questions about the basic goals underlying what we have started to do. Redefining where we are going, making it worthwhile to achieve the purposes for which government has been set up. So, I think that uh, in these times, government... Uh, Okay. We talk about sustainability accounting. What do we mean? We mean that in these times, it's not just enough to report profit. You, you, you report profit to the owners, but you also look at the people, the employees, the civil society, and then you look at the planet, the, the environment. Are we depleting the environment, or are we, uh, you know, we, you know? Okay, Prof, talking about taking care of the present and the future, if you look at the scheme of things in the private and public sector, monies get to get missing at some point, and we know that monies have footprints. So when they are stolen or when they disappear, they actually leave footprints. How do we trace these prints to recovery? Okay, talking about bringing, 
talking about prof prof okay prof Talk, talking about talking about method punishment on people who are faulted and defaulted i understand that you've received your license to start a university are you planning some of this knowledge to be taught in there as well as issues of tax in fact uh, i want to thank you very much uh, that university essentially takes up this i think this week okay we everything to prepare our, our to meet the requirements of the NUC, um, we have mobilized staff to be on the ground. Um, we are we are we are essentially starting with the postgraduate courses, and um, just like you said, forensic is there, taxation is there, um, corporate reporting is there, financial management is there. We want to raise highly skilled professionals for the Nigerian society. So uh, the work is on the ground, and it is progressing very smoothly. Wow, that's on, 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 on that note, Professor. I want to say, I want to say, congratulations as Nigeria looks to recover from the economic hardship. It is a good progress that we are, that has been made at this point in time. Thank you, thank, thank you so very much, Prof, for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular point in time. Thank you so very much, Prof, for sharing your thoughts with us at this time. Well, oil prices rose on Wednesday, extending strong gains in the previous session after industry data showed U.S. crude stocks unexpectedly fell last week, just as near-term travel demand picked up with pandemic caps easing. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude features rose 23 cents to $84.38 a barrel, adding to a 2.47% gain on Tuesday. Brent crude features jumped 38 cents to $85.14 a barrel after rising 1.6% on Tuesday. Well, up next is the global market the global market review. The latest U.S. consumer price index, a key inflation readings, was the focus for global investors on Wednesday. U.S. equity futures were little changed early Wednesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average futures dipped 31 points. S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite also were on the low. European stocks were mixed on Wednesday as market participants digested a slew of corporate earnings and awaited for the next key reading of U.S. inflation data. DAX dipped 0.17%, CAC 40 also dipped 0.08%, while FTSE 100 appreciated 0.4%. 5%. Shares in Asia Pacific were mixed. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index gained 0.74% across 24,996 points. Shanghai Composites was low at 0.41% across 3,492.46 and the Nikkei also depreciated 0.61% across 29,106.78. For African markets, the bulls dominated most of the markets with Tunisia's Tunidex, Namibia's overall index, and South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 posting gains, while Ghana's GSE Composite and Nairobi's All Share maintained previous figures. That's the Global Market Review. I am Bosedi Abel. Thank you, Bosedi. And on that global note, we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. Business Express returns Thursday by 9.30 a.m. Keep safe.